the stream. Okay. Uh, I replace this with this. Cool, cool, cool. Is the stream up? Oh, wait, yes. I'm gonna bust this for sure. Okay. Assets are good. Stream is up. Your dub skis. Um, and go through. Is the stream still working right? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Champions to watch. Um, for Metabusters, Cam is 2 and 0 on Jack's top, apparently. Um, interesting. Jax is very good at the moment. Um, Garrett Ezreal, still his champ to watch. Um, I personally am very scared of Garrett Ezreal most of the time. Um, yeah, it's been banned against him in most of the games yeah, I've watched. I, I personally like to perma ban it. Um, because he just puts out so much damage and you can never touch him because it seems like he always has E up. Uh, it's kind of nuts. Uh, Jacob Nami, obviously pretty cracked at it, has 3.08 KD. Um, so I could see that not getting banned and then him being able to pick and pop off with it. Um, yeah, I, I think um, things to kind of catch my eye just as we're getting into the matchups. I think bot lane is going to be really important to watch, uh, particularly the support matchup, because I think Eric O has been very, very good this season and has been especially good on some of the engaged champions. So I think if Jacob went for something like his Nami, uh, it could potentially get punished if uh, Eric is confident enough to pull out something like the Blitzcrank or the um, Nautilus, things like that. Yeah. I also think I'm interested to see what Rex goes for in the jungle. Uh, he absolutely went off on the Lilia, as you see there, but I, pretty sure he also had a really nice Lee Sin game so he's kind of got the options of going for that farming style or also going for that like aggressive playmaking early so it'll be interesting to see what he does but I mean look at the Hidiri stats on Malachi like yeah. seven and one man if that's open I'm taking it like yeah. that is and Malachi very is impressive Malachi is awesome right now like his R is just mm -hmm. super 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 useful can also Definitely. get a ton of vision with the saplings Good. And he's super good for playing for your team as well. And I, I do think as we kind of just look at the series as a whole, um, I think it's a really even matchup. It's hard for me to favor one team over the other, but I think you can kind of favor maybe individual matchups. I do yeah. think Rex has been an extremely strong performer, so I will probably give him like a little bit of an edge there. I've also seen Cam playing really, really well. I mean, flex player of the season. He's had a really good season. And then I'm not really sure how the mid lane matchup will go because I hadn't seen Drago before. But I think one of Rift Shark's areas is definitely their bot lane is probably their strong point. So if you pick something like Malachi and you play for your bot lane, I think that'd be a very good strategy for them. Because I think for them to have a good chance in this series, they have to be like setting Dean up for success. Yeah, and with that, I'd like to see Dean on more of a hybrid carry. Um, Jinx, Kai says, I have one of those three. I think he would be best on. Um, I'd rather see that versus like a Jin or an Ash. Uh, if you're gonna 100%. Play, I think. I think you yeah, he had a really nice um, Jinx game the other week uh, in the series against Spectres. He played really, really well in one of those games on Jinx and kind of just took over. And like when you get ahead on that kind of a pick and your team plays for you, it just becomes really difficult. Yeah, I agree. Um, key matchup here is Rex versus Hadiri. Um, yeah, I we were talking about this just before. Um, both of these players are really good in their roles. Um, I think both of them have a pretty wide champ pool, so it's be interesting. Definitely. Um, but also, we're seeing no matches played against each other, so that's kind of exciting. Yeah. Cause I do think Rex has been a really strong performer, as we said. Hadiri has been a really strong point of his team in their wins. So I think if he's able to show up on the day against Rex, that actually takes away a lot of Metabuster's power. Because anytime Rex has been in the lineup for them, it's usually they're winning off the back of Rex. Like every, everyone plays well, but he's typically been at the forefront of their victories. So if Hadiri is able to show up today and have a really good performance into him, I think that could be another way that they can have a good window yeah. into the series. And with that, we're in draft.
Let's do it. So, um, Jinx band for Metabusters. Uh, I like this. Okay. Like we yep. were saying, we want Dean on hyper carries. Get him off of the OP hyper carry. Um, Draven ban for Rift Sharks. You gotta ban that against Rex. If you don't ban yeah. the Draven, he'll just, just go bot off. lane and pop yep. off. Yep. Yep. Uh, Yone ban against Drago. This is good. Um, he plays a lot of Yone. Um, yeah. One of his most played champs, and it can very easily hard carry a game, so I like it. Um, Echo ban for Cam. Which yeah, I, I like. think they're just showing a lot of respect to Metabuster's potential to flex right now. I mean, yeah. you're, you've banned two champions against players that aren't in the role that they lined up as initially, but you just have to respect that flex potential. Yeah, it, that's half of Metabuster's strength, I think, is just the incredible amounts they can flex. Um, Darius, Darius. Darius. Right here. Um, that's interesting to me. I'm not actually sure if I've seen Cam play Darius. I think I've maybe seen Rex play it, but... I don't know, Rift Sharks always has a really good draft strategy, so to me that indicates that they're planning on taking something top that would be a bad matchup into Darius. Yeah. Well, let's Potentially first, like a tank or something. Wow, first, first pick, pick Kha'Zix. That is bold. I do think Kha'Zix is a strong champion right now, particularly if he can get ahead, but first picking it I think is kind of crazy. Not crazy, but just very bold because... Typically, if the enemy drafts a lot of crowd control, it can be difficult for Kha'Zix to function, and now you've just given them the opportunity to plan their entire draft around countering a Kha'Zix. Yeah. Karthus Lux being picked up for Rift Sharks. Um, I don't know Hadiri how has that. been a monster on the Karthus in one, at least one or two of the games I've seen. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how the matchup with into Kha'Zix goes, but um, I think it'll end up being better if... Um, Rift Sharks can just survive that like early game period with Karthus is like kind of useless gank wise, and Kha'Zix kind of just has free reign over over the mm -hmm. lanes. Um, Ezreal oh, also getting yeah. One up. thing we didn't point out was that the Ezreal didn't get banned. Yeah. Garrett's gonna get yeah. to play it. That's exciting. That's very good. Yeah, he's freed, <laughs> released from his shackles. Nautilus <laughs> pick. Um, I like this. You yeah, I've seen Jacob really prefer if he isn't going for his Nami. He's really liked Leona, but I think Nautilus fits just in there like a Leona does, and is even more reliable. Yeah, and this lets you pick out like Karthus or or Lux either from like if you're kind of in a standoff, you can pick him off pretty easy. Give Kazakh a good target to just jump into right away. Um, yeah, the Lux pick is surprising to me. I'm just I guess that's going to be mid lane and they feel confident picking it, especially it'll for sure be mid lane now that they've locked in Blitzcrank, but that's surprising to me just pick it that early, but obviously they feel confident in that. that is, and then the Blitzcrank for Eric O, I think that's been banned every single game. I've not seen him play that personally once, so I'm really excited for that. I think there has to be a flex on Rift Shark's side. Lux is not a, a Drago champ. He does not play mage support hmm, okay. kind of characters a lot. Um, well, it'd probably have to be Joel, then, I would assume. Yeah. If, if... And I think Lux is a good mid laner. Like, definitely can be countered, but has really a really good lane, has really it's kind of the uninteractive un style where you just get your lost chapter and you just perma push the wave. Her ult's so low, you can just constantly shove in the wave. But I don't necessarily love Lux as a pairing with Karthus, but we'll have to see. Yeah. Um, do, do, do Aatrox and Camille getting banned from Rift and Metabusters, respectively. Um, makes sense. You, I think we saw the power of Aatrox in that uh, series last uh, earlier today. Yeah, the Camille getting banned could indicate something that's um like a more tank jungler. Oh, my whole draft thing just crashed on me. Okay, I think they've also recognized that it's probably Drago top lane. So you've yeah. now you're banning like something away from him because I definitely think the Camille is a Drago champion, not a Joel champion. Yeah. Rift Shark's predicting the um the Orn pick with from the from the Camille ban. So they, they banned away yeah. Orn. I like I'm that. I'm curious what lot. Dean will take here on four because he has a lot of options. The only things that are gone are the Ash and the Jigs from his champion yeah. pool. I don't think he's a Draven player, so curious what he's gonna want here because he knew Garrett would pick Ezreal, I assume, you know. Yeah. They left that open with a plan. Yeah. Oh, no way we're locking in Callista, Callista, right? That would be super exciting. Wow. Yeah, Callista okay. Blitz. Okay, okay. That's yeah, really I, exciting. I always forget Dean plays Callista until he picks it. 
I don't think I've seen that, but I do think Callisto's really strong right now. It's just a hard champion. It's really hard to execute on. It's not only hard to play as an individual, but it's hard to play as a team because you have to really snowball the champion. You have to play smart. You have to play cleanly. So I'm excited to see that. That's really bold. I like that, though. D Dean Callista has looked good in the games he has played it. So uh, I do have faith that he'll uh, be able to perform on it. A Soul is such a good pick here, though, in my opinion, because you're matching like the kind of just AFK lane of Lux, but now you're giving yourself a champion that scales super hard to try to match out Karthus scaling. And Callista in the late game, I don't know how you play into A Soul. He'll put down the um, yeah. black hole on the ground and she's slow, she can't jump. Yeah. I like this Jax pick too. I think it wraps yeah, up if the you're comp have really to well. Pick, yeah, definitely. I agree with you. If you have to blind pick a top laner right now, I think Jax is fine. He, he scales super well. He doesn't have a ton of bad matchups. Definitely. Can set up for Kha'Zix as well with the Counter-Strike. Yeah, I think that's a good pick. I really like Metabuster's draft. I think it's really well-rounded. Pantheon for Drago. Interesting. Uh, I it's going okay. top. Yeah. This mm. is, it's a bit... Rift Shark's draft is a bit odd because they have Pantheon, Callista, Blitzcrank. You want to yeah. like fight, 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 go in. And then you have Lux and Karthus there, which kind of want to space a little bit more. Yeah, I'm torn on it because I think Kadiri is an extremely good Karthus player. So I don't hate the pick for him and you're giving yourselves late game scaling. But like you just said, it's kind of counter to what you want to do as a Callista, what you want to do as a Pantheon. So I think they're going to have to find ways to snowball maybe without jungler help. But I don't think Lux is the worst pick because what Lux is going to give you is priority and giving a champion like um, Karthus priority and giving your Callista to have priority. They'll have priority bot, they'll have priority mid, so that'll let them start snowballing dragons, which is something you have to do as the Callista. Yeah. Okay, um, let me see if I can get... Let me see if I can get champ assets made. Yeah, as you're doing that, I'll just kind of talk about some of maybe the other matchups. I'm not exactly sure how Jackson to uh, Pantheon goes. I assume it's like most Pantheon matchups where early game he'll kind of just dominate. And then if Jax can get like two items, I imagine it starts to turn once Jax has like a lot of um, ability haste. But at the same time, I mean, I, I don't hate the Pantheon pick at all. I think it's a nice counter. If they can get ahead, I think Rift Shark's draft could be very difficult for Metabusters to deal with. You know, if Callista's fed, if uh, Pantheon's fed, it becomes very difficult for them because you you kind of see like Aurelian Soul is a champion that has to take a while to get online. Um, so yeah, I think that could potentially be a concern. But overall, if Metabusters just plays like a pretty clean and stable early game, I think they're going to scale so hard that it'll be really difficult for Rift Sharks unless they've gathered that big lead. Okay. And anytime you're in a series like this. I sometimes favor being on the side that doesn't have to do as much, doesn't have to feel as pressured to be proactive. My bad. But if Rift Sharks can get off to that great start and just kind of dominate this game one, that would set a really good tone for them in this series. And then you kind of have to reevaluate your whole strategy if you're Metabusters. Yeah, sorry, I, was, I had to delete the old assets because of the roll swap. No problem. So it's going to be Drago top. Um... Boom, boom. Uh, this, this. Okay. I definitely think Drago Top gives a different dynamic to this team. That's where I've seen him play, and in the yeah. games I've watched him, he's been a dominating force in the top lane, just absolutely just running over opponents. And you're playing into Cam, who has been a really good player in his own right in multiple roles, as we said, flex player of the season. And I think if Drago's able to have that similar type of performance where he just kind of dominates, I really like Rift Shark's odds. But if Cam can kind of play to that level he's been at and kind of shut Drago down or keep him kind of even, I really think it's going to be difficult for them. But I think you can assume that Rex will probably get the better of the jungle mashup, at least early game with something like the Karthus on the side for Hadiri. 
but I guess if you're Rift Sharks, you know, we're saying they have to snowball. But at the end of the day, if Karthus scales, like, you always have a chance that Some, if you go late game as Karthus. Yeah. Something we haven't pointed out is that Erico got Blitz. Like, yeah, true. Okay. Cool. So, champ matchups. Um, Jackson and Pantheon have not been played before. Uh, so this will be this will be interesting. Um, Kha'Zix is zero and two into Karthus. That's, interesting. That's yeah. interesting. I think part of that might be a byproduct of um, teams at this level sometimes struggling to close out games, and I really just think Karthus is a super good pick in general because of that. But I'm I'm surprised it's two zero. But I don't know. I guess like you know if Karthus gets an item or two, it becomes difficult for Kha'Zix to jump on him. Especially a lot of Karthus players won't take Flash. They'll take like Exhaust or something. And then if you had that, it'd be very difficult for the Kha'Zix, I imagine. Yeah. Um. And Callista is four and zero oh, into Ezreal. Wow. Okay. Interesting. That's, that's yeah. probably the most surprising to me. Yeah. I mean. Hmm. <sighs> Yeah, I, I don't really know that matchup, the ins and outs of it. I mean, any any matchup with Callista, she's going to be stronger early. Yeah, but, but I, I would Ezreal imagine that Ezreal there. could... Yeah, just yeah he could survive so better than a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and and especially... Yeah, I agree. So we'll, we'll have to see that. And Ezreal, if anyone's going to win the matchup, it'll be Garrett, because he is a really, really good Ezreal player. So I'm excited to see how he pilots it. And I don't think the mid lane stats are necessarily surprising. You see that um, Lux is 2-0 into Aesol with the... Um, Lux having a much better KDA, and I think that's just because Aesol just has to just scale and farm, and something like Lux just perma shoves him in, gets a lot of priority, and kind of sets up her team. Okay. And let's see, season. Season Lux very strong on the season, yeah. as well as Joel being extremely strong on the Lux. Yeah, I, most of those wins are from are from Joel, so. This is yeah. Hmm. Dean six and two on the um Callista this season. Along with Erico being seven and three on Blitz. I'm I'm excited to see this bot lane matchup. That's probably what I'm watching the most. Definitely. Are... Yeah, because you mentioned that Eric's has not gotten Blitz crank very much this season yeah. at all. And I think typically, you know, I don't I actually don't think Nautilus is bad into Blitz Crank at all. I think you're actually pretty comfortable with that. But I mean, that's just Eric saying, "You're giving me my my champion, my yeah. main. I'm, I'm gonna take it, and I'm happy to see he has that confidence." But I don't hate it. It's not like you picked Nami or something, and then you're just at threat of dying. Like you're playing into a Nautilus, who is if you hook him, he'll kind of just turn on you. And if you Ezreal is Ezreal, so he's gonna be a difficult target to hook in general. So I think it'll be a difficult game for Eric. But at the end of the day, if a Blitzcrank player is playing well, he can always find value. Yeah, there's always gonna be like crazy hooks. He can pick, and I'm I'm confident that Definitely. Eric will be able to hit this. Um, hmm. Yeah, that also gives you threat onto a champion like Aurelian Soul that eventually just scales so hard that he's very hard to touch. Like he, he'll eventually just outrange Callista way too hard for them to have a chance there. He'll be difficult for Pantheon to get onto. Lux does have a nice range advantage into him even later into the game, but something like Blitzcrank, one hook onto Aurelian Soul in a late game team fight can be the game. So I, I do like that pick a lot. A little bit of a delay getting into the game. My my league decided to poop itself, so let's see. Um let's look at the season records for just the champs period. So interesting is that Pantheon is generally losing into into Jack. Just kind of losing in yeah. general, I think. Yeah, yeah. three Eric, and five yeah, Pantheons this season. Yeah, so it's interesting that Dragon decided to opt into it, especially when it's not it's not doing too hot. Um, yeah, I, I think, I don't know. I think Jax is a hard champion to pick into, especially in this situation yeah. where they don't necessarily want to go late. Like, you've picked Callista or something. So, you know, he doesn't even necessarily have to dominate his 1v1. If he can just do put the jacks behind like get himself a little bit of a lead and then transition that through ultimate usage to kind of either snowball and cart this or just furthering like a Callista snowball and i think pantheon can have a lot of value but like you're saying if the game goes late game jack's side lane is kind of unstoppable for for anyone on that team okay and we are in game now 
awesome. Semifinals number two of a great season. Let's see it, guys. Winner will face Spectres in the finals. This looks like um, Metabusters are going to try to... Oh, no, that's their side. Okay, so it looks like they went to go invade, just dropped the ward because nobody was there, and then came back to their side. Oh, Kha'Zix, Kha'Zix is actually is stealing the red. Yeah. Uh, Drago is going to see what's going on, though. Pull him off of it. This is terrible for his tempo. They need to get this kill here. Everybody oh, burning flash. flashes. I don't think he can get him here, though. Rex queued the Krugs by accident. I mean, I think eventually he will just be able to get the buff because you're kind of forced to go to lane at some point, but yeah. they have full information that this is happening, and now and that you've blown flash on top and jungle, and that's Hadiri really good for Karthus. And has so Karthus. much tempo. By the time Kha'Zix finishes, by the time Rex finishes red buff, Karthus is done with his bot side camps. Definitely. Yeah, he only gets the red. I mean, Karthus yeah. will get every other camp. So good job by Drago to kind of protect his jungler there so it didn't become too difficult for him. He's taking a lot of damage here in this top three. Yeah, this is unfortunate, though. And this is level two to level one right now. Hey, Jax had flash from the invade. He probably could have killed there. Uh, Karthus definitely needs to bail out his top laner here. Like, he gave you all that help. You need to help him out. But big hook! Doesn't turn into a kill, but huge chunk on, on Nautilus, though. So. Yeah, it's not a kill, but anytime you chunk Nautilus like that, it really limits, like, his opportunity to go in. And one more hook would probably be his life. So we're already seeing a big hook out of the Blitzcrank. It's what you love to see. Ooh, Hadiri did there actually take Exhaust here. Exhaust is huge! Oh, it turns wow. into first blood. That is amazing for Pantheon. Yeah, that's super. Like, that was looking like a little bit of a dire lane state top yeah. lane, but then you find that first blood onto him. And frankly, I think that's just misplay by Cam. Like, you you know which way Karth is cleared. You should be assuming that he's topside right there, but oh, we overstayed a little bit there. That right there is more. The Karth has probably needed to help um, Drago get his wave pushed in because he doesn't have teleport. But. At the end of the day, they trade kills, so, I mean, good job by Cam getting back and finding yeah. that. Yeah, the top lane lane state is kind of just flip-flopping back and forth. Yeah. You are getting a fight in Bot River here. Remember, Kha'Zix has no flash here. Yep. Oh, it's going to be an easy kill. Kind of sucks oh, that it went air. But then he, oh my god, it just... One kill after another. Great use of that's what you see. You see, we picked the Callista, we picked the Blitzcrank. We're gonna have that priority, yep. and they use the priority to roam up. Yeah, you lost the crab, but you get two kills right there. Like that's super, super good job of the Blitzcrank in the Callista lane. Yeah, and that was a that was a beautiful hook. Perfect Definitely. Game. Yeah, Thomas did wasn't even able to react with his flash there. I don't think he was expecting that hook to come through. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we saw the top lane's kind of been flip-flopping back and forth, but overall, a really good start for Rift Sharks. Yeah, Drago is on double longsword while... Um, Karthus has long. lost chapter yeah. already. Karthus yeah, has lost crazy. chapter pretty five minutes. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. The heck? In terms of CS... Um, it's pretty even all around. Um, Drago's a little bit low on CS top. But it's nothing too crazy. Um, oddly enough, we're good. Uh, Metabus is getting zoned off this top wave, despite being a level up. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, you're, I guess you're seeing the power of the Pantheon right now. Yeah. You kinda look, like you said, you look at his items and double long swords plus a Doran's Blade to literally boots and a D yeah. shield. But Kha'Zix has a, has a timer to go top here. Uh, this could he be huge. He's spotted out, though. Shut down. Ooh. I think this will be a kill? Yeah, this looks like Good it. use of the E, but can he trade? Ooh. Oh, wait, he does trade. That's huge. That's, un that's unfortunate for Metabusters. That would have been amazing if, <clears throat> if they got it for free. Yeah, if Cam could have lived that, that would have been huge, but... Good job as well by immediately going onto the dragon there once they saw the Kha'Zix was going towards topside. 
So you do get that first dragon, a really early first dragon, which is super good for their comp. I think Nautilus might be dead here. Yeah, I think he's yeah, just dead. Nothing can do. Oh, Ezreal's no mana. Ezreal's gonna have to flash here, I think. I don't know. It doesn't even matter. Oh, that was wow. crazy rend. Super, super well played there by the um, Rift Sharks bot lane. Garrett just kind of overstaying a little bit, trying to help out his support. Got caught with um, no mana to E away and got exhausted and was forced even through the flash to go down there. Really, really good job by the Rift Sharks bot lane. You're seeing why they were comfortable letting Ezreal through because they had this prepped, obviously, of the really aggressive Callista pick. Yeah. Nothing really happening mid lane. It's, it's quite boring compared to the it, other yeah. lanes. It's the most snoozer picks, man. But, you know, they're both trying to scale. They're both trying to yep, they're just sitting do there stuff. Farming. Yeah. And a nice little CS advantage to Lux. Just kind of built that naturally. Yeah. Kha'Zix is waiting yeah. here. This would be big. Ult will, ult will hit. Just Ooh, not, not enough quite damage there. You, you do force out the Lux Flash, though, which is really big. That can be punished. You have a huge window now where yeah. once that Aurelian Soul ult is back up, you can either send your Nautilus mid, you can bring the Kha'Zix back. That's a window for Rift Sharks to get, a, or Meta Busters, excuse me, to get a little bit of a lead for themselves somewhere in this game. you got to repunish the Flash. Game Drago now. is here in mid lane. We're doing it right they could, now. They could dive. <gasps> the card this ult is huge! Oh, oh. Killed in the Pantheon. I'm not even where it landed. Wow, they did exactly what I said. They tried to punish the Flashless Lux, but yeah. I don't think they calculated the Karthus ult coming over the top. And then the Pantheon yeah, just coming through as well. That's what we said. Flying yeah. in. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty much a dream start for Rift Shark. Sure, yeah. the top thing could be two less deaths, but I think you're taking that right now. Yeah. For and what they're, grabbing, they're grabbing Rift Herald now, too. Yeah, which that they really wanted to do. All. Yeah, they could, they could stabilize, or not even stabilize, but they could get top lane even more ahead with that. Or they could drop it mid and try to get Lux ahead. But... I'm really impressed with what we're seeing out of Rift Shark so far. Metabusters is going to spot them out. Asol is rotating. Probably get a scrap here. Oh, gosh, Karthus just grabs it and walks away. I really want to see what Karthus chooses to do with this Rift Herald, where he chooses to take it i honestly think you should just take it bot lane and you just blow open that lane as much as you can yeah get this callista to just be insane yeah because i mean yep. honestly if we're looking at the comp like how much damage does um uh, meta comp really have if your ezreal's behind if you're having to wait on asol scaling yeah. yep, and the rift herald has just dropped bot get some gold on callista I like it. Definitely. 4k gold lead for um for Rift yeah, Sharks pre, already. Pre, pre, 10, pre, minutes, pre so. 10 minutes. That's well, we said that their team cop would need to get ahead and I mean yeah, they've they, got they, they certainly ahead. got ahead. With a dragon coming up in a minute as well, I assume we'll see them just probably reset their bot lane really soon and kind of prep for that drag. Pantheon just doing so much damage to this Jax. Winning out massive on these trades. Oh, wow, Jax actually the, turning it back. The Jax are. Ooh, oh, and it's going to be a solo wow. kill for Cam. Holy. I did not see that coming. He turned it around at the ER. Yeah, I don't think Drago saw that coming either. I mean, that's you're, you don't even have Ignite there. That's down. Both use Flash, but I mean, that's against an Ignite. He manages to get that solo kill. Finds the shutdown. That's huge. But, I mean, that's what we've seen out of Cam all season. I mean, he's been an extremely yeah. good player. Even in their team's losses, he's often performing really, really well. And that's what you want to see out of your better players. You know, they got to step up. It's playoff time, so you love seeing that. Bot turret already almost broken, though. Yeah. Crazy. Bot lane is a problem right now for uh, Meta yeah. Busters. Oh, but we're seeing that punish on the Flashless Lux. Give me jump. That ult did <gasps> so much uh -oh. damage. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, almost a double kill for Hadiri. That's huge, though. I mean, he's getting Dark Harvest stacks already. Yep. And let, yeah. Yeah, that is so close to being a double kill. But, you know, good job punishing the Flashless Lux. But Ooh, Blitzcrank unfortunately. Might be fishing. Oh, no way. Blitzcrank is fishing. No way, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> he's looking. But you are going to see a dragon come through. But honestly, well played, Dujol there. 
he even though he went down he landed like a full combo including yeah. ultimate onto both characters which put them low enough for that Karth assault to come through yeah oh i think nalus in no man's land right here yep. has Did the flash not the Ooh, oh that was disgusting hook oh that feels bad right there you blow your flash and you just get hooked back anyway eric said you are not getting away from me that was absolutely disgusting yeah, I mean, you're seeing why Blitzcrank was banned. I mean, he's hit yeah. multiple impact this, looks. This is why people ban it. Uh oh, Drago and might Drago be in trouble here, though. Up. He but, yeah, he will go down. Jax gets it. That's good. I mean, if you have a hope, if you're a Metabusters fan right now, you're praying that this Jax can get a couple items. Yeah. Because I, I do mean, think it's a pretty good champion into something like Kalista as well. It does become difficult for them to play. Yeah. But. I mean, because like late game, yeah. late game, if Jax just has items and jumps on the Callista, what are you doing? Like mm -hmm. Blitzcrank E to knock up, and then yeah, I'm excited to see what Drago or, or Drago actually kind of opts in for his builds this uh, game. I think Pantheon has a lot of build variety. He's going for a lethality item first, but I think oh wait, hold Karthus on, cards is here. here. Man, this top lane is action packed. There's always a jungler up here. Oh, no, there's no mana on Karthus, but doesn't matter. They're able to get it anyway. Hey, they're giving us the action. Yeah. This is not a snooze fest. Both supports yeah, hanging around mid here. Yeah. Seeing if they can fish for anything. As we're getting plates, but for free. Plus, it's taking a long way, I guess, just to sniff out yeah, for a really fight. Sure. Yeah, but there's no turret here for Ezreal. If Callista reaches him and is able to get that Ren slow, might be able to blow his flash. Blitzcrank's here. Yep. Oh. Just dead. Yep. Commit the Blitzcrank flash, but that's another kill onto Callista, and you, Ezreal, lost both summoners there. Uh, looks like that uh, could be a Rage Blade still. I assume it's a Rage Blade coming out next for your Callista. Versus, I mean, you could go Rune on second, but and this Asol is just dead. Now, Rift Sharks has just taken over the game. Jax is getting yep. plates. Six K gold lead at fourteen yeah. minutes. This is crazy dominant. Here, why don't you press X for us real quick, and why don't we see what the uh, gold's actually looking like on the matchup? I was wondering what the button was. Yeah, so you're seeing super huge gold leads really e everywhere, but top is Top's, good for uh, yeah. Metabusters, and jungle's not as big as the other roles, but... Okay, almost a 3k gold lead bot lane alone. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing the Callista prep getting put into action and getting executed extremely well. Yeah. I mean, even, well Lux, a goal hey, even Lux is 1,500 gold up. Yeah. It's... Lux is farming really, really well. I mean, almost yeah. 10 CS of this. Got stuff happening. Top. Ooh. Is Drago going to get out? Oh, wow. Oh, he trades back for it. But this, oh, Jax, this Jax is not escaping. Good spacing from Dean. Can he get in Dead range here. to rend? Yep. Flash to has to flash friend. Really good job by Drago there to take one with him and kind of make Cam kind of have to commit so deep that he goes down as well. Yeah. Aurelian Soul is sitting on the empowered version of his ultimate right now, so you know maybe they can find a good fight using that as kind of a window to get a little bit back in this game. We'll have to watch how he chooses to use that. Agreed. Um, both bot lanes have rotated mid. It's good that this time. Just lets Ezreal farm a little bit easier. But they're just. Versharch just takes the mid turret as soon as they get there. And they're gonna start up Rift on spot. Oh, wait, no, it's dead already. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a really yeah. fast second rift as well. Yeah. Drop mid straight. I do think. Uh, I guess they're dropping it mid right now to kind of get some priority towards the dragon, but. I would have liked them to kill that wave first and then drop it, but. 
I mean, honestly, with it's how fine. advantaged they are, I'd say hold it and see if you can get some yeah. kills and drag and then drop it. But, I mean, I think they are just going to get some kills here. Cam is here, though. They want to fight. There's the ultimate. Oh! oh! oh my God. That ASOL ultimate went crazy. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Drago we're we're down, we're down 6k gold. We're pulling off that kind of a team fight. That was insane. That you was saw the value crazy. of that Aurelius soul ult there. And you know, honestly, what part of what set that up is, you know, Dean blew his flash in the previous play to kind of finish off the Jax. Not having flash there against that empowered Aurelian soul ultimate with like a Jax there as well. I mean, it's really hard for him to live that regardless of how fed he is. Drago is hitting the dragons, looking for the kill the A soul. Yeah, he I just he just does so eight. much damage with the lethality. Oh my god, just snipes him with the spear. Yeah, so at the end of the day, you know, we, we take stock off how that fight went. That is nice for Metabusters, but at the end of the day, it looks like it's still going to be a third dragon coming through for Rift yeah. Shark. Still with a big gold lead, so... Dean is here, so just going to be able to put a ton of spears in, get an easy smite yeah. rend. That is good for Metabusters, but aren't actually able to get much off of it in the end. They did get... Did they just get one shut down? Yeah, they just got one shut down. They only got a 500 um, gold shut down on the Callista, which is still good, but... Yeah, it's, it's but, still that's still big, but... Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, in the moment, I thought that was going to be a little bit more of a swing for yeah. them, but... You kind of see what they're going for. Like, Aurelian Sold is now at two items. Um, Kha'Zix is at two items. Once Jax gets at two items, he'll be big. But at the same time, Karthus is going for a second item death cap. Yeah, Kha'Zix it's, it's finds him here. Wow! That is he gonna, is he gonna make it out? Blitz, Blitz hook whiffs. Okay, that, that's really good job by yeah, uh, Rex there on awesome Kha'Zix to Rex. find that. Oh wow, another catching out Drago. Man, we're, we're seeing some misplays out, out of the yeah. side of uh, Rift Sharks here with such a commanding lead. You'd hope they could play it a little cleaner, but Gold they're, they're is, giving windows. Gold is Metabus. starting to shrink. So. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely still in a commanding position. I don't want to make it sound otherwise, especially when you have like something like Karthus scaling in your back pocket. But yeah. you need to clean it up a little bit because something that uh, Metabusters comp is really good at is about picking off mispositioned members, picking off people that are out of position with stuff like the Kha'Zix and the Nautilus. Karthus is at nine Dark Harvest stacks, um, so he's he's gonna start. It's gonna start doing damage. It's uh, I can't see how much damage it's doing at the moment. Um, yeah, once that death cap comes through, that is a lot of damage for him. Obviously. Yeah. But I mean, I do think at the end of the day, like it's not the great. Like you have champions like Aurelian Soul who builds a good amount of health. It's not like he's a completely squishy mage that gets yeah. one shot by Car by Karthus. You have the Edge of Knights, a really good purchase on the Kha'Zix. That means you can't just be dry ulting him. Jax yeah. can potentially even build something like a Zhonya's Hourglass third or fourth item, which could yeah. be huge. Uh, I think that would be a good purchase this game. Or maybe even, yeah, I think third. Probably best. Um... Uh-oh. Oh, big snipe. Good snipe. Kadiri is taking some damage mid lane, but Dean is just hitting and... Oh, oh my god. That hook came through, but it did the damage. Didn't even need to pull it back. <laughs> you know, I gotta say, I'm loving Eric's willingness to just commit his flash yeah. aggressively on repeat. Like, he has just flashed forward to guarantee kills for his team like three or four times now. Yeah, and I think help taking Hex Flash helps incentivize that. Because, like, as, as a player, even if you're not using X Flash off cooldown, just being like, oh, I can flash here, it doesn't matter, I have oh, Rex finds another one, though. Oh, and Kalista's a little bit caught here. Oh. Hook uh, doesn't connect. Kalista oh, just out. zones him just with the damage. But once again, Rex finding another pick onto this yeah. card. This. He's getting items on Kalista. He's going to start being able to one-shot some of the more high health targets. Yeah, definitely. But we, we got to acknowledge a minute 30 soul coming up. I mean, that's huge. If you yeah. get something like Mountain Soul onto the team of Rift Sharks, it makes Cosmos' life a lot harder. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, I think he might have found another. Can find a pick jumping out. Them. 
Yeah, we got to see how they set up for this drag because we're a yeah. minute out on drag and we're looking at the mini map with a lot of control wards over on that side for Rift Shard. It's be difficult for Metabusters to get in. Uh, I don't like this hook. Nobody was there to really super follow up. The TP Coslick's in. jumping in the back line though. Chunked Callista, but couldn't get the kill. Oh, huge play by Cam on the side. Oh, but oh, but just gets get CC'd a little bit too much. Yeah. Maybe that Ezreal can for a find something here. Yeah, I mean, they're all low. This is your best chance. The re-engage was can't, insane there. Can't find it there. And this should be yeah. a free Baron for the Rift Sharks. I'm not really sure about that. You know, we saw Nautilus kind of force that engage. And I think, you know, you should have probably set up for the Dragon. Because now you've kind of lost Baron. We saw how good their team fight looked last time when they were at the dragon, set up with that empowered ultimate. Yeah, and yeah. if they did, if they did really want to engage, I think if they just committed to it a little bit sooner, like before they had Asol and Kazakhs walk away, I think it would have been fine. And before Blitz and Kalista and like were able to get to Top River, like because there was there was a good like thirty second chunk of time where Pantheon was just by himself and there was Asol Kazakhs. And Nautilus there. Death. Oh my god, and you're just getting one shot. Man, Kha'Zix is doing work, but yeah, Edge of Night's gonna block that. He just walks away. With Nautilus dead here, I mean, you have Callista, so even without a jungler, I don't think it's a bad idea to try to take this dragon. Yeah. You stack up your Rins, it's gonna be hard for Rex to secure that. But I mean, if you're Metabusters, you might as well fight right now. You're not going to get very many opportunities where Karthus isn't going to be in the fight. Hey, Jax might be able to force the Callista. Jax does have start flash here. Oh. Oh, isn't able to land the Counter Strike. Oh, and Callista Ren does take the Dragon. That's Mountain Soul for Rift Sharks. Yeah, I think they're going to move up here. You know, good, good job by Dean there to actually secure that. Yeah. Not like it's that difficult. And for he he, com he committed to to going for it, even when Jax was walking in. So I kind of saw what they were going for there. It can have been able to maybe land the actual yeah. counter strike, but it looked like you know he flashed, but wasn't quite in range, so it wasn't able to get it off. Yep. Oh, we got okay. Eric B having a little bit of the back, but with the Baron buff, I think they're gonna be able to break open the base and. Potentially even in the game, they're able to find another pick, another hook. Dean, 7, 1, and 10 on the Kalista. Crazy. Understand why he picked that, why they were confident to give Garrett his signature pick. This Ezreal just doesn't have enough damage yet, no mirror mana or anything on it. Oh, Nautilus ult hits a 5. Ezreal eating forward. Yeah. It's gonna cost him his life. Yeah. Unfortunately, just a little too far behind right now, even when it's really getting engaged by Nautilus. I believe this will be the game. It's going to be a, a Rift win, looks like. See, like, oh, big Karthus damage. Yeah, I mean, overall, an extremely well played game by Rift Sharks. I think we saw, you know, eventually the Kha'Zix was able to get some picks. Wasn't the cleanest game by any means, but once they grabbed that Baron, you know, I think the game was pretty much done and they did a really good job about just closing it out, not giving the enemy team a chance to scale. Yeah, just very well executed by, by Rift Sharks. Even Metabuster. even after the Fiesta that was top lane, that was yeah, definitely. You know, if you're Metabusters, I think you had um, some good moments there, and I definitely think you can go into the second game kind of with a different strategy or with kind of a new mindset and kind of feel go good going into it. But you definitely had good moments, but I think you really got to evaluate your draft. Are we willing to give away the Blitzcrank? Are we comfortable giving over Karthus even? You know, like what what are we gonna do about that? So I'm excited to see what they decide to change. Metabusters is gonna take um, I don't know, Metabusters is taking red side this time, which is interesting, considering they also picked blue side for the first game. So trying to switch it up. Um, who do you think they're gonna give counter pick to? Metabusters on the red side. That's interesting. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if if they choose to keep um everybody in the same position. 
I wouldn't be surprised if they don't just give Cam um, counter pick, you know, because he definitely was a bright spot for them this game. Uh, he had some good moments on the Jacks, but definitely was seeming to struggle a little bit into the Pantheon picks. You know, maybe you give him counter pick. But I also think it opens up the opportunity for them to flex Rex around a little bit easier. You know, maybe like guaranteeing that Rex gets a really good matchup if they want to send him top, if they want to send him to um, bot lane or something, you know. So I'm excited to see what they do. Honestly, I would like to see them choose which of Rex or Cam goes jungle top based on what matchup they can get. Yeah. I think that would be good. But it, honestly, if I'm them, I think you might need to consider banning the Karthus. I think Kadiri is maybe undefeated on that pick this season, or at least close to it. Has put up dominating performances on it every single time that I've watched. And that champion, you know, if you want to go, if you want to go scaling, we shouldn't give them scaling. Is my thought. You know, if we're gonna pick Aurelian Soul, we shouldn't be playing. Like we shouldn't be letting them have something like Karthus. Yeah, I agree. Do all the assets again. Do, 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 do. I also think, you know, they have a tough question, though. It's like, okay, I mean, I don't think Rift Sharks will change their strategy of leaving open Ezreal, but are you confident to blind pick Ezreal this time when you've seen that the Callista is an available answer? Will they decide to go for something else? Maybe they consider, you know, what if, if we ban Callista, is everything else fine for Ezreal, you know? So, I mean, I think they definitely have options, but honestly it was an insane performance out of everyone on rift sharks but really the bot lane we said they had to win early they won early yeah and i don't i don't think you want to be playing into the blitz crank again or maybe even the Callista blitz crank but gotta yeah. change something up because you can't it, one lane can't kind of get put that far behind for you to have a chance to win i anticipate a Callista ban pretty much immediately from from rift sharks yeah, which is super impressive by the side of Rift Sharks to kind of be able to put such a performance on to where now you are potentially forcing that band to come out, which would open up another big, you know, maybe Call the Callista band opens up your Jinx or something, which we already know that Dean's really comfortable on. So that's the benefit of putting on such a good performance. It will open up something else for you. Okay, let me go back to the start here. Um, key players that we... uh. I didn't think we get got here last time, but key players uh, for this game are Dean and uh, Thomas. For um... yeah, I think that's fair. Game. You know, we saw how how key Dean was to their success that game. Yeah, he was really really good, extremely good. Close. To, so uh, I think... at, yeah, for Thomas, I, I'd like to see something besides Aurelian Soul. I'm just not a fan of that champion. If I'm gonna be honest, like. You just can't do anything early game. Yeah, I feel like as a mid laner, I think one of your biggest strengths is being able to impact the rest of the map, the rest of the team a lot easier than some of the other roles. And I think when you go for something like Aurelian Soul, if you're not confident that your side lanes are going to at worst go even, I don't think it's a really good pick. Because it's, it's not like it can just reliably scale up on its own. And I'd like to see him go for something a little more aggressive or at least a little more lane prowess you know yeah. if your jungler like rex is pe performing pretty well there something that's got a little more setup for him something that's got a little more ability to get priority for him um could be good but at the same time you know if they're just gonna blind pick lux for um joel like that's hard there's not very many champions that can get a good lane into lux so it's gonna be a tough ask but you know i think it showed for thomas that you know he's comfortable on oriana is one of his key picks that champion's really strong right now, has a really good laning phase into a lot of champions. So, you know, maybe you pivot to something like that so that you're still scaling, but you have more impact early. We are going to get into draft here in a second. Our yeah, question I, I, be answered. I, I agree. I, I just want him on a champion that can do something. Right? Because, like, Asol that game didn't do anything except for the one super good. R. Yeah, he he did have a really good R. That was like the best moment of their whole game was his really good R. So I'm not trying to discredit or say he played poorly, but I think that just that champion just is so limited on what type of impact you're able to have. And I think based on how bot lane looked, 
you can't rely on your bot lane to necessarily be able to hold on that long for you to just we all know what a soul does if he gets three four items we've all seen that but i don't think you can necessarily rely on getting to that point so here we go darius been thinks been first by metabusters yeah insta zach ben. zach ben interesting Oh, you know, that might indicate that they... I think Thomas is... Oh, I'm not wait, for sure. They... Is Thomas the jungle player? No, Zach Ben is against Joey. Oh. Oh, wait. Did... Oh, so they subbed in Joey? Or no, they say, subbed did... in Joey for Rex. Yeah. I, I, I was so confused. Like, wait, Joey didn't play last game, did he? Yeah, I, I wow. New assets then, yeah. Okay, so they subbed in Joey for Rex. That completely changes things. You know, that's surprising to me because I do think Rex, you know, is probably, if we're being honest, their strongest player. So I'm curious, you know, what kind of strategy they're coming into this with to where they okay. think that, you know, they can get some kind of advantage. But I, I do like no. Zyra Khan for meta boosters. This is probably one of the strongest bot lanes in the meta. Um, Definitely. Although it is countered by Kate. Wow. Oh. Sharks has so much poke with this. Oh, oh this is a disgusting comp. You know, you see the first pick Lux, which was definitely a potential to go mid, but then they lock in the Xyracon, so they're just like, okay, we're going to play Caitlyn and throw Lux there, and then you take Ziggs. Yeah, like, completely oh, countered the, the Xyracon here. That's, wow. Yeah. I would hate to be Metabusters here. That, I, that would be kind of what pisses me off. Okay. That's going to be Thomas on Auction mid, most likely. Which yeah. I don't think is a bad pick here. I mean, if we're being honest, Ziggs is going to farm really, really well, not interact, and perma push in the lane. So it's going to be difficult for him. Um, I think you need a jungler that has some early threat onto Ziggs. Yeah. Like you have to, I, maybe something like a Jarvan could come through. I don't know what all Joey plays. You know, something like the Zach yeah. would have been a good pick, but maybe something like Jarvan. Joey can play Jarvan. Or Vi. Just something that can have a lot of threat because. You have to be able to reach this back line. Wukong, Wukong would yeah. have been a good pick. That's a good ban. I do like the Octron in that it's pretty easy to roam since you can just be invisible. Um, which I hope Thomas does enough to get a hit, like to be able to have an impact. You can't like perma roam because it's Ziggs. He'll just blow up the tower. But um, Maokai ban also. From Metabusters, I like this. Definitely, Maokai um, is definitely a good band. We saw Hadiri's stats on it. When you're when you already have champs like uh, Caitlyn, Lux, Ziggs, they're probably gonna lean for more of a supportive jungler. But I mean, at this point, you didn't ban Karthus, so like I don't think Karthus is like perfect for your team comp. But <laughs> with how good he did last game, I might just take yeah. that again. And then it, at that point, it's just their comp's really disgusting. Orn Gonna ban. have to see what they end up doing though. I, I, I yep. like this Orn ban because if I'm Meta Busters, yeah. I'm looking at my comp and I'm like, hmm, I, I wanna, I want a tank that can also support, you know, the hyper carry, so high CC. And I, I think Orn checks those boxes reasonably well. Um, while also, you know, Orn upgrades are kind of, are kind of busted. So definitely. I, you know, I think what's really going to decide this draft... Oh, I do think Lily is a pretty good pick, but yeah. what's really going to decide this draft to me is, you know, as Metabusters, you opted for red side, you're choosing to give Cam that last pick counter, or you're choosing to give your top laner counter. It's got to be an impactful pick at this point, yeah. because if we're being honest, bot lane's going to be pushed in and probably losing. Mid lane's going to be pushed in. You got to have a winning lane yeah. somewhere, so we need to see a really good pick you for their top lane. You can't be out here R5-ing a, a tank. Like, it's just a yeah. pure tank. You can't be r having something like Scion. Ivern. Ivern. Ooh. Man, I, I do like that pick a lot here, actually. I think, oh, man. They're just going to play for bot lane, have Ziggs just perma push in on his own, and have Ivern just camp for bot lane, I imagine, and it'll be good. But Drago's just saying, hey, I played Pantheon well last game. I'm just going to blind it. Like, what's your answer? Hmm. Uh, I don't like this Pantheon pick. Yeah, I don't love it as a pick on its own blind pick, but I will say I think it pairs extremely well with Ivern. But I, oh, I don't man. think it pairs well with the rest of their comp, though. Yeah. So are we please, going please, please don't R five Scion. We R five Scion. I I don't like this. 
you know, I don't hate Metabusters comp if I'm trying to be objective about it, like just looking at the champions. I, I like their it, one, two, three, but I I don't like this R5. Uh, I think it's okay to have some beef for the for, for the back line. You definitely have a lot of damage. You know, I think Lilia enjoys having a champion that can kind of create space for her in team fights. She likes team fights going longer sometimes, so I don't hate it. My issue is just when you consider how last game went, I don't have the most faith in Metabuster's bot lane to be able to survive. Oh, but I will point out, actually, I don't think we said this. It's Noam in as well. So maybe it's Noam on the... Oh, oh yeah, Noam. Maybe Noam top lane on the Scion, which if that's the yeah. case, then, you know, that is kind of like his pick. So that kind of changes my opinion a little bit. You know, if it's giving him his comfort mm -hmm. and you're letting someone like Cam, maybe Cam's on the Lilia. Really not sure. We're going to have to wait and see. But that would, that would change my mind a little bit. But... I'm just struggling to see how the Zyrakon plays yeah. into Caitlyn Lux. So, here's my thing. They banned Camille um, round two, which indicates, okay, they're setting up for a tank. But, it, it, if you want to play a tank, why do you not R4 it, and then you can still save the R5 counterpick? Like he, I think that's he, just giving a lot of respect to uh, Drago's champion pool. Yeah. I, I, that's my thought there, you know. But, yeah. I do get what you're saying. You, you'd like to see... Because I don't necessarily think Scion's going to like win against Pantheon. Like, sure, if it goes late, like eventually Scion gets so tanky that he'll be a problem. But yeah. early game, Pantheon will have the priority, I imagine. And I don't know where you have priority is if as Metabusters, you know, you have a Lilia that's going to be can clear well, can clear fast. But if if we're looking at it right now, I think all your lanes are going to be shoved in. So I think Lilia is going to be really limited on her options. And Rift Sharks can just poke you off objectives here. All right. Like if, yep. if you're trying to set up for a Drake, like Caitlyn Lux is, and, and Ziggs are just going to, keep peppering yep. you over and over again and then you put down that trap line you have the iron bushes like it's a really difficult um, team to get in against but i will say scion doesn't care you know he pops his ultimate that man is going forward so you yeah. know maybe that can kind of break open that kind of line that they're going to draw and then you have something like recon to follow up i do think if metabusters plays a clean game and has like a and gets to scale i actually would favor their team composition but just with how a dominant Rift Sharks was game one, how well they snowballed their lead. I'm struggling to imagine Metabusters will get there, but I'm excited to see it. All right, there's been a little bit of technical difficulties on the league client side for uh, Nothing Sharks, new there. So, yeah, they just couldn't edit runes. Um, so while we have a little bit of time, uh, we forgot to pick an MVP for last game. Oh yeah, we did, didn't we? Uh, um, what's your uh, thoughts? I want to say Hadiri. Okay. Because I, I think that Karth has put in so much work getting, fixing top lane after, you know, the kind of rough very beginning and then, you know, getting objectives. And I, I think he had the most impact across the whole map. Yeah, he definitely, you know, as a jungler, had a lot of impact on the map and definitely helped out top lane. But I got to give a shout out to the bot lane. Like, it's hard for me to even pick between Dean or Eric. They both played super well. I I'd probably I'd probably say Dean. I mean, just slamming Callista to me is yeah. so, so impressive, so aggressive, played a super, super good game on the Callista and really just kind of made that game unplayable for the enemy bot lane. Like, yeah, that once, was just something gotta... else. Once you got a, a small lead, you just like smash their faces in. Because I do think Hadiri did kind of, he got caught out a few times at the end of the game, kind of giving them a little bit of a window back in. But with how ahead the bot lane was, it just wasn't even close. So I, I think Dean would probably be my MVP. Yeah, I can agree with that. You know, if we're looking at the drafts already, though, I'm really excited to see how Hadiri plays this. You know, he played the Karthus that, you know, you farm up, you scale, you're the carry. 
now he's on the Ivor in a completely different style. Has a really weird, you know, different than any other jungler in the way that he clears. Def, it's your support, essentially. So I'm really excited to see how he kind of plays this game. Because it's definitely a different role, different mindset yeah. you have to go into. I'm, um, I'm interested to see how these um these objectives go. And this top lane. Um, apparently, Scion does well into Pantheon. Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, apparently, it's like a 5% win rate delta. Yeah, I would imagine that Pantheon just can't really solo kill the Scion ever, and then eventually, Scion is just such a force. You know, if Scion, depending on how Scion builds, his split push becomes really effective. Yeah, if that if that's how he yeah. ends up turning out, then I think I like the Scion pick more. Yeah, I think it's a good pick overall for their team. Like My, you kind of need some front line when you're playing. Like if no one can tank a Luxing a Lux laser, if no one can tank a like one combo from Ziggs, you would have zero chance to fight objectives. But the Scion gives them engage. It gives them a front line, and so I, I think it's good overall. It's just not that it's not that back breaking counter pick that we were necessarily expecting to see on like an yeah. R5. But I mean, you know, I think it's cool. You know, they're, they're choosing to sub in Noam for this like deciding game, both Noam and Joey coming in, like, you know, give them their comfort. You know, Noam is a really good Scion player. So assuming that it's him on the Scion, I guess it could still technically be Cam, but if it is Noam on the Scion, I don't hate that at all. I think, you know, you give somebody their comfort. It's a deciding game for your whole season is on the line. You know, let them play what they feel good yeah. on. I think what would have been better overall for a draft is if you picked um, some AP mage mid, like uh, maybe Oriana, and then you go something like Jarvan jungle, maybe? Yeah, uh, I think that is an option. The problem with that is, though, if you're taking Oriana in that spot instead of Akshan, I actually don't think it's that. Like, it's not bad because Oriana is good. And if you committed to something like Jarvan and then you have like Rakan, Jarvan setting it up, definitely could work. But you were just outranged by Ziggs. You were outranged by yeah. Lux. You were outranged by Caitlyn. And if you weren't playing super, super clean engages on the same page, it'd be really difficult to function. So I think that's also Thomas going for comfort. I've seen him play the auction before. I think he yeah. likes to pick a lot. And at the end of the day, like I've played into Joel Ziggs. It's a difficult matchup, no matter what you're playing, because like I've said, you know, he's going to farm 10 CS a minute. He's going to push you in. He's not going to interact with you. So I think just kind of taking the comfort that you feel like you're going to be able to impact the later parts of the game the most with is fine. And if you want the Lilia, it's always good to have Lilia as solo AP. So works out pretty well. Gnome is uh is Mossad agent, right? Yes. So it is Gnome on the Rakan and Okay. And Cam so on Cam the on the top? Yeah. Okay, interesting. You know, I still don't hate it. I think I've actually seen Gnome play Rakan. I think he is actually a pretty good Rakan player as well. I am a little bit surprised that a player like Cam opted in for like the Scion tank pick. Because I just think I've seen him mostly opt for carries. We've, we've seen him play stuff like Nefiri. We've seen him play stuff like um, Quinn. Not saying any of those would be the pick here, but just we've seen him up. For Silas top, he carried a game on the other day. Like, yeah. so I'm a little surprised that he opted for Scion. Yeah. But, was, hmm. yeah. We'll have to see. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't go for some, like, Giga scale or side landing pick or something where he's just trying to, like, break the base open he and just, just not interact calling. with the poke. I don't know if that's yeah. uh, it's normal. I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm in, like, a uh, bot lane I, yeah. bubble. I imagine the Cole start, you know, if we're saying that Scion has some kind of advantage into Pantheon, I imagine taking Cole will nullify whatever advantage he would have and will definitely allow Pantheon to get control where, of that lane where early. Is, what is Scion doing? Why is he right here? What? Oh, <laughs> I believe he's going to proxy gonna... first wave. Yeah, okay. What? This is... What is this? Oh wait, it's Scion mid? I'm so confused. I I'm 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 I guess I mean he gets like... the full he gets a full wave. 
He does. And then TP. Okay, let me. I just. I don't really see what value you're getting out of doing that. As opposed to just, like, having your teleport and starting in lane. If I'm being honest, I don't yeah, really see the me, value there. Let me zoom out a bit. As well as, because he chose to do that, he wasn't defending his jungler's top side at all, so you lose the red buff. Lilia is going to counter-invade the other side, so good answer there, but... Yeah, I don't know. I do think we need to point out the fact that they did choose to lane swap, though. Is I don't yeah. think that's a bad idea, just that level 1 kind of blew my mind. Yeah. Is it going to be a lethality scion too, though? Oh, or, or man. some other? Like, I highly not, doubt not that. Tank build. Um, honestly, I think they'll probably do the tank. Maybe they just think that. I really don't know. I, I would have thought that Akshan would be happy into the Ziggs because you kind of just farm up. I, I'm a little confused, but I'm excited to see kind of what they're going for. Lilia with a Joey. super early tank. Does burn. Uh, Lux and yeah, Lux Flash and Caitlyn heal. Since I was putting in damage, that Caitlyn's dead. Oh, Ooh, Flash is Side forward. does burn Flash for E. Oh, didn't get the E off in time. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Oh, this mid lane looks rough. Oh. We're fighting everywhere on the map. Oh, oh my God, there's kills okay, Tom, everywhere. Dude. Okay, oh that, that was God. nice. I wouldn't have expected Akshaw getting a solo kill there. Really well played to him, but... Everyone oh, wow. is dying. Yeah, we need to take a deep breath real quick. Holy you know what the, wor the worst thing that could possibly happen to me, in my opinion, though, is... Support Lux just got three kills. Yeah, but it, she's gonna She's about to back it up lunch. Lunch after it. Yeah, she. it's... Oh my God, it's insane. Okay. That's, that's disgusting. So Ziggs, Ziggs killed Scion mid... Akshan yeah. killed Pantheon top, and this Lux is dead out of her mind, has lost chapter at three and a half minutes in the game. Yeah, I don't hate the gank out of Joey, but kind of just got smacked. Like, he came through for, for like, I think he was level two, and yeah. they literally just turned on him and one-shot him. Like, kind of just got smacked around, and then just a good job by kiting out as the Lux, and Garrett tried to flash forward to confirm the kill onto Dean, but the Ignite already had it, so then he was out of position, and yep. at the end was, of the day, lost chapter and boots! Lost it, chapter and boots on it, Lux! It, oh That's God. absurd! This yeah, is that, Eric's game to get an MVP. This is his game to carry. I mean, I believe. that's going to be hard to deal with. We are seeing a good fight around mid, maybe, but... Uh, uh, I think they just try to walk away. Yeah. Ooh, flash, flash from forward out of oh, oh man, just, that Zig's damage is crazy. Oh, maybe the Scion can get a trade here, but I don't think he catches it. I don't yeah. think he does. We're seeing some spams uh, on the Lux, or Lux spamming the Zigs, shouting him out. I mean, the, the Zigs oh is three and two. Oh my God, Tom's just outplayed. The yeah, Thomas is kind of going off right now, so you got to give credit to that. I was kind of questioning yeah. the lane swap. I'm seeing the point, but like, we picked Scion. Like, why are we perma fighting early into Ziggs? Like, yeah. farm and scale. You're winning the top lane, but there's just such an advantage now for both Ziggs and for Lux. No R on Scion yet. This game is definitely something. Yeah, this is this is a game of all time. I think, okay, what I want to see out of Metabusters is Thomas is playing a really good game right now. He needs to eventually start trying to leverage that advantage to other lanes by like pushing yeah. in top and roaming down to mid or something. Yeah, but, I want to see him do something like a like back reset and then just walk by. Or, Lux sorry, shoving top. Flash there of Lilia as well. Oh man. Yeah, this Lux is. This Lux is terrifying. Yeah, I mean, we're at a 2k gold lead at 6 minutes. Majority of it is obviously on the Lux and the Ziggs. But, oh man. Thomas is, I mean, sorry. Um, Joel is too good at Ziggs to let that man get 3-0 and at 6 minutes. Like, that's just, that's unfortunate. If you're cheering for Metabusters. I assume that he will 
be able to kind of keep and hold on to that lead because he's very good about being super hard to punish his zigs. Things Overall, is, though, yeah, we go ahead. Things have seemed to kind of calm down. Thank I God, I was like, having so much trouble following yeah, what was happening yeah. there. Like, like, everybody's dying everywhere. Yeah, I still oh, can't nope. get over that side on level one, but oh, he looks for a fight here. Yeah, we're fighting again. Lily is just so low here, but actually gets the kill. Oh my God, okay, and then Thomas comes in. Okay, double kill on okay. Sion. Hopefully that stabilizes mid lane a bit. Okay, Metabusters, good job punishing that invade. Sign's actually able to farm now. Yeah, one thing that's going good is there hasn't really been farm leads being developed. Like, we saw last game where they were able to get some pretty big farm leads in the lanes, you know. Um, even though they are down in bot lane, Garrett's doing a good job of staying even in farm right now. Yeah. Yeah, and if Gnome can consistently land those Q... Oh, they're oh, looking for oh, a fight! Oh, oh, oh. Oh man, Bad. not quite able to get a stun off with the pullback. That could have potentially been a kill. You know, maybe if he chose to try to like flash, reposition the feathers or something, but you know, at the end of the day, it's just ult. You just lose your ult and ignite. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. They do have to be careful here right now though, because without ultimate, Garrett yeah. is like one combo from dead. Yeah, I also gotta watch um, for both of them being low at the same time. Because that could happen, and if they're both low, somebody's dying. Yeah. Where we are seeing a CS advantage right now is in the jungle. Um, I'd like, if we can get Lilia to catch up a little bit, I think it'll be easier for Metabusters, but... Oh! oh. Flash for Flash! That was a really good reaction by Eric there. Just real quick, we can look at the gold leads. Um... ADC gold is pretty even. Um, support is about 1k up. Um, Thomas is 500 gold up in top lane. And then um, jungle is 300 gold up for either. Yeah. Good job by Metabusters to kind of stabilize and kind of break yeah. the gold back to a more even state. But, and, you know, at the end of the day, if you're able to pick up either of those shutdowns, you're right back in this thing. The mid lane gold lead is not as much as I thought it was. It's like only 200 or something. It's 300. I thought it would be way more. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed that um, Metabusters was able to stabilize mid lane like that. One thing I really want to see Metabusters put focus on this game do not allow um, Rift Sharks to get that early Herald. You're winning topside, so you'll have that priority. Because if you allow the team with Ziggs to get Herald and just take like a super yeah. early first grade, a lot of plates, um, that can really snowball them. So I want to see them kind of not allow that to occur. Ivory kind of sneaking the dragger though. I think he came over the backside of the pit with his Q and kind of snuck around the Scuttlecrab vision. This is well played by Deary. No Recon's gonna, gonna sniff him out, yeah. But not really they're sure not gonna they do anything to stop about though. it. Joey's gonna grab um, Rift Herald in response. Yeah, and I mean, Sion just can't really walk up and ever hit the Demolish procs on the turret because Ziggs clears the wave so fast, but good answer by to immediately go onto the Rift Herald. Yep, I like this choice. Scion opting into the Titanic Hydra first. I like that. He's going for the split push. You know, at some point, I honestly wouldn't hate for them to just send him and, like, lane swap it so that he starts going against Pantheon. Yeah. Flash, flash burns. Right he just walks it out now. Yeah. Maybe he could have just used the ult initially and be able to save the flash, but I don't hate just, you know, you want to respect that. You don't want to go down. Yep. This uh, would be a huge kill if they can get this kill here and drop Rift Herald. They won't Not get it though. Quite able to secure They are forcing him out, so Rift Herald could still get dropped. Yeah, Pantheon will be able to get back with ultimate though, so it's not like he'll be gone for a long time, but I do like, you know, you shove him out, you drop the Rift Herald, that's a lot of plates onto Akshan, getting your winning lane even more ahead. I like this play by Joey.
Oh, I'm here I'm going in. Uh, Lilia might be in trouble here. Kind of sticking yeah. around here. Yeah, that's a flash out. Stuck around way too long. That's a kill, yeah. It's gonna get picked up by the bigs. Not quite able to finish him off. I'll be honest though, I would have thought when Lux got that three kills that we would be seeing a lot worse yeah. state than that of Lux Like they are losing a little bit, but that's expected. Like they're doing a good job yeah, of I not thought, of holding their own. You know, I thought the Lux would start just like dumpstering them after the three kills. Yeah, it, it really makes you wonder what would have happened if they didn't get three kills, because with three kills, it's not as impressive as a lead as I think you would have liked to have seen. So you are kind of giving them that time to scale. Garrett gets to his first item, only being down like a little bit of farm. Yeah, Sign can now clear waves pretty effectively. Still gets super chunk doing it though. Yeah, I, I really don't think it'd be a terrible idea for them to start sending Scion into the Pantheon and letting the Akshan go towards Ziggs. But... Yeah, where he can roam around a bit more too. Yeah, because at some point you want Scion to move into that side lane position. Because with that build, he's playing to just push waves and take turrets really quickly. Leandri's first on the Lilia. I haven't really seen that. That's an interesting choice. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, Thomas. Oh, 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 I mean, oh, Joel. Is it a kill? Is Thomas. it a kill? Oh, don't do it to him, Joel. With a healing from the passive, saves it. That was oh, so close to me. What? Oh, Fine, he's, he's greedy for first turn here, though. Uh, okay, gives a shutdown over to Scion. I mean, that's a little bit of Zig's brain right there, wanting to get that W off for the turret. He does collect the turret. It's a lot of gold, but huge shutdown back on the Scion. I'd actually like to see that gold in the lane right now, how that kind of affects it if we can. I'm going in. Okay, using the all. Okay. Oh, I did not like that E. Yeah, I'd like to see Garrett be a little more patient with his pullbacks. I think yeah. he's playing well overall, but it's been kind of rushing the pullbacks and hasn't been able to get huge value out of them. Wait, oh, Cam's here Fire with ultimate! Him. Going for the eight one. Oh, Lux gets him though. I guess oh, this I guess he just focus. ulted toward the Caitlyn, thinking that the the Lux kill is like completely secured, but it yeah, wasn't. Yeah, I believe he was. At the end of the day, you know, you do get the shutdown on the Lilia, so it's not like he got out. You still get the shutdown on the Lilia, so that is big. But now Joel's here, having spent that money here in the first turn. Caitlyn burning. Super uh, Joey's in trouble. He's things just gonna burn. Yep. Yep. Good answer by Rift Sharks to, you know, counter that um, pretty nice roam down by Cam. Unfortunately, Drake is coming up in a minute, so they can't uh, just immediately get the objective off of it. But they can set up vision. That's another turret for Ziggs, though. You're seeing the power of the Ziggs pick. Yep. And Pantheon's getting good damage on turret top. Yeah, gold has gone back to about a 2k gold lead, so Rift Sharks kind of expanding the gold a little bit. I believe Pantheon might just be dead, though. I got a little bit yeah. of a frozen stream. Yeah, I got a bit of a... Oh, okay. What's going on here? Up game. Oh, is it the... I'm not entirely sure. I think sometimes maybe if they paused, that could have happened. But oh, no, if it'll crashed. let you go back like 15 seconds, it might fix Ooh. itself. No, nah, League just crashed. Oh, okay. Let me put it back on the... What, what's new, Riot? <laughs> yeah, let me put it back on the waiting screen. Sorry to the viewers. We'll get you right back in there as quick as we can. It's been a pretty exciting game. Yeah, a lot of back and forth. It's been it's been a scrap, this game. Yeah, I like to see Metabusters, you know, coming into this game, too, because game one was definitely a rough for them, you know, coming into this game, too, with a good strategy. I, I'm, I'm seeing what they're doing with the auction counter. They're getting a lot of value out of it. Definitely putting themselves in a position where they have a chance to win this game. So you you love to see that. Alrighty, and we are. Uh, if it wants to switch to the one I'm using. There you go, and we're back. Awesome, we are back. All and right. he's swinging on him. Yep. 
and gets the kill nice and easy. I'm really impressed with Thomas's auction on this game because Drago yeah. was looking impressive on the Pantheon last game and kind of just getting shut down. Yeah, like, completely, really nice. completely neutralized this auction. And now you have a 3 0 auction. Your Scion is farming up pretty well. Looks like he's going for a Trinity Force on the Scion. I think that's what that is. I can't yeah. say I've seen that. I definitely can't say that's, I've seen that. That's a that's a new one. I mean, I don't hate that. That's definitely like full committing to side laning, which I don't hate when you're playing into something like Ziggs, Ziggs Caitlyn Lux. Six six uh, altered the wave. Yeah, no surprise there. Just trying to kind of just trying to keep that there. turret as alive as possible. You know, and I think at this point. You kind of just want to allow your solo laners to get these advantages in the side lane. And one thing we didn't really point out is that it's really difficult to actually collapse on something like Rakan and Zaya, especially when you don't actually have much engage on the side of Rift Sharks. Like you mentioned earlier, it's more about setting up around objectives. But it's going to be difficult for them if, you know, the side laners are pushing, just go in on them. Thomas Ryan. is actually hunting, though. Ryan's Ooh. coming mid. Oh. Just barely couldn't drift enough. Oh my god! Oh, that damage is huge! No, are we crashing again? Uh, what is this? What is up? No, there's no way. There's no way, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way. This is a banger. Oh yeah, that was a, interesting, a really nice engage. Able to just delete the Lux there. A lot of low health bars on the side of uh, Meta Busters, though. I think... Um, there's a potential for them to get turned yeah. on here. Pantheon is coming in, so. Did we crash again, or? Yeah, I love my computer. Oh, okay. I'm gonna no restart, the, restart the client. Might be one of those. Yeah, no worries. I've just been hitting reconnect as soon as we come in, so. Like one of those things, because League has memory leaks, so. That's annoying. Definitely an exciting play, though. You know, we wanted to see um, Thomas, you know, kind of not only win his own lane, but start to put that pressure elsewhere onto the map and roam down, blew up the Lux. We'll have to see how the rest of that team fight plays out, but it's what you want to see out of him. Yeah, we were very hesitant about this um, this auction pick. I, I thought it wasn't going to do great, and uh, I'm glad to be proven wrong. Yeah, I think I was more... Thinking, you know, if it's into the Ziggs, it'll just kind of go even and farm. Probably neither of them die. But into the Pantheon is able to straight up grab a lead. And then Scion is just scaling like he would in top lane. So really, really creative by uh, Metabusters with those lane assignments. You know, you love to see that. Yeah, I'm glad they, they did a little bit of minor meta busting. And honestly, that engage would have been even better for Metabusters if Eric had actually, he hit a really nice timed um, Q on Lux to kind of stun up the Rakan right as Rakan popped the quickness, his ultimate, to try to get in there. And even though he ended up going down, I think that engage would have been even more devastating for Rift Sharks if he had not able to be kind of slow Rakan down. All right, let's try this again. Okay, I'm gonna uh, back it up a bit. Everybody, avert your eyes! Yeah, you didn't see this Baron. Avert your eyes! <laughs> uh, this button. Uh, oh, that was oh. weird. <laughs> hey, we're making it work. All right, looks like I can't back it up anymore. So, uh, okay, well, if we're just taking quick stock of what happened, you know. Thomas is unkilled. 7-0-3 on the auction. Yeah. So they were not able to turn that fight back around. Having an insane performance on the auction. You've completed Trinity Force on um, Scion as well. Are able to get them off the Baron just with the threat of the Zig. Throwing out the Zig's ultimate and the threat of that poke. Which, it is definitely a difficult Baron to take. Um, if you have Ziggs and Lux poking you from distance. But overall, the gold lead is basically even, so credit to Metabusters for finding a way back into this. Yeah, they did try to start the Baron, but they got forced off of it pretty fast. Um, just the poke was too much for them to do it with people alive. Yeah, and at this point, 
you know, we actually see a pretty nice, uh, huge shutdown available on the Pantheon as well, so well played to him to kind of, even though he was losing that lane against Ashan, finding good value, finding kills, you know, with that build he's going for, Eclipse plus Blade of the Ruin King, if he gets his W onto a squishy target, he kind of just one-shots you. Yeah. I do also like the Bork on, um, Ashan. Uh, yeah, definitely. Easy to proc and it oh, Cam from behind! Oh, Goes wide. But he's forcing them all back. Redemption used by the Ivern. Oh, that Lux ult. Two? Yeah. Uh, they end up they are actually able to get gold, and... though. Wow, I, that's crazy to me that the only person that went down was on Rift Sharks there, but... Oh, Lux just huge, gets a, a good binding play. to pick another kill. And that might actually end up just being the dragon for them, which third dragon on that comp is kind of insane. I think at this point, we need to see them committing more to side lanes, like their weakness is to team fights. Thomas is hanging around though. Definitely strong enough to kind of do something if he can avoid getting gone on. But I mean, oh. how do you fight this with those pushes? Yeah, it's just, it's terrible. You can't see them. Oh, oh man, that's what in. in, trading flashes with Thomas. Oh, oh the Lux from the downtown Lux almost hit. hit. Wow. Hits oh. the E though. Barely gets him. Good job by Thomas, like, living that as long as he did, so he actually trade the Pantheon back, but... We're kind of just seeing the power of Rift Shark's comp right now. It's kind of just Caitlyn, Lux, Ziggs with Ivern shielding them and just buffing them up. Looks like Joel actually TP'd into top lane as well to keep that push up, threaten another turret. Oh, the... Frames got screwed up again. Now we're back at a 2k gold lead. Gold mid lane is actually really even. Yeah. I really want to see Metabusters start side laning more. Make people match this Scion. Make people match the Auction. We don't have to be running at this grouped up team. He has, a, he has hole breaker, so I think we should be seeing some more splitting. Yep. I believe that'll be the game plan from here on out, which I definitely think is their win condition. Pantheon is going to match it, though. Has the Borg, so I... I think Pantheon might be able to just force him off, but Scion does have more items. Ooh. Pantheon, with that build, is actually able to fight him pretty easily, it looks like. You know, he didn't opt for tank Scion, so it's not yeah. like he has a lot of armor or anything, and pretty squishy. with that build... And he has Pantheon... Merc Treads to make it worse. Yeah. Oof, that might actually not be as easy of a win condition as I was thinking it was going to be. Yeah, not, I'm not Scion sure about the itemization. Some TP angle. Like, that's the yeah, only really, way. Yeah, I'm really not sure about the itemization out of Cam there. I honestly believe, you know, if you go for more of a traditional tank mythic on Scion, it's not like he doesn't split push well. Yeah. He Especially when, when Pantheon is lethality yeah. mythic. Yeah, as long as you go for Titanic Hydra, like, your split pushing is insane. And with Trinity Force, he might be too squishy to match the Pantheon. So I'm, I'm curious to see how that evolves as this game goes on. If maybe he goes for an armor item next, and then it gets easier. But without, if your Scion's not winning the side lane, I actually think it's a really difficult game for Metabusters. Thomas is still really big, though. And if he's able to find these, like, crucial pickoffs, you definitely still have avenues. Looks, Looks like, like Cam's just coming for another ultimate. Yep. Looks like they're just trying to see if either of them can get a pick to run the Baron. Oh. Joey getting damage on Lux. Yes, Setting it up for did. Cam to go. Oh, he you gets caught. That. What Ooh. the heck? He got caught on like the edge of the wall Huge. by Raptors. He still got a double kill. Ooh, Drago ults in, and he's taking a ton of damage. He's gonna go down. Here comes Thomas. The Scion's putting in damage. Forces the Caitlyn flash. They can just run Baron now, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. That's absolutely huge. Really, really good engage there to actually find the Lux and find the um, Ziggs, like their two strongest members. Yeah, Pantheon kind of had the late R, which by the time he actually landed, Everybody could well, just kind of gang up though. on him. Dean and I, Dean on the Caitlyn with Ivern are still pretty formidable. This is a hard fight. There's so many low health bars. Uh, they just got scared. Oh my! Oh, oh Joey got my. one shot. 
Yeah, Ivern Q into a Caitlyn trap, and your jungler's just gone. Oh, and now they're starting start Baron. Oh wow, what a turn of events! Yep, everybody's that alive five now. PP, and they just did that to them. And it looks like they're just gonna choose to give it. I think they had vision on it initially to know they restarted it. Oh wow. I honestly think Metabusters hesitated a little too long to run straight to the dragon. They kind of danced around mid and kind of got chunked. Where I think if they'd immediately ran to Baron, I don't know if they have the option. Look to at go this! In Look on. at this red side vision. There's pretty much you can see pretty much nothing. And there's the Baron. That's absolutely massive for the side of Rift Sharks, and that honestly might be what gives them the ability to close this game out. You have Soul potential Soul coming up in 40 seconds. I don't really see you coming back in this game if that team comp gets Infernal Soul. So yeah, you have to win this the Soul fight. Is fight. Massive. This fight could be their season on the line right here. You've got to see what Metabusters can pull out. You know, there's no flash on Dean, no flash on the Ziggs. Lux Flash is about to come back up. Noam with an engage. Okay, I'm missing the Scion arm. Alts are down. This could look bad. Yeah, that engage kind of whiffed here. I, I think Red Sharks will be able to kind of just run it in at him now. Huge Lux ult. Good Zaya ult, but just no damage. Oh, Thomas is on the backside, though. Getting kills. That's a three-man sleep! But nothing to follow it up. Oh, Octron does trade with the Lux. But all of the Metabusters carries are dead. Yeah. Garrett Garrett got so low he had to leave there. Yeah. And, oh man, that looked good for a moment, but at the end of the day, it's just gonna be Infernal Soul for the side of Rift Sharks. That initial engage just kind of whiffed onto Hadiri. They weren't able to confirm that kill. And then at that point, you hit a three-man sleep. But there's nothing to follow up with. And even then, Joey did a ton of damage by himself after the sleep. It just wasn't enough to secure any, any of the kills. Yeah, I, I honestly think they had control of the river. They chose to go over the wall. They chose to go into that jungle corridor. I think, you know, maybe if they just make Rift Shards walk into the river, it's then easier for, you know, maybe Lilia sleeps first, and then you follow up with Rakan, but yeah, they thought they had to pick onto Hadiri and just weren't able to convert it. Yeah, if you force them to walk through that choke, and then you have somebody sitting in, like, mid-brush that can do a flank, uh, I think it I think it works out a lot better. Like, Lilia's, Lilia's sitting on the side, or Scion, that can, like, ult in, get a couple knockups, and then... Like the squishier parts of Metabusters can walk up. I think that's just the better way to, to play that. Definitely. You know, at this point, it's going to be difficult. Down 5k gold, down the Infernal Soul. Look at this. But they're this not out of it just yet. Siren just can't play the game here. Oh, wow. Yeah, we he really no got to be questioning this build path. I mean, like, I don't even know what he's going next. Is that a Wits End? Like, what is he building? A bunch of illegal builds. This yeah, I, I really think a tank Scion would have been pretty impactful here, but. Man, this is their this is their season on the line. Gotta find a way to defend the base here. Pantheon's just going in. Oh my god, the Lux are just chunked everyone. Almost killed yeah, Pantheon. Rift Sharks just going for the end here. There are some low health bars. Maybe they can find a way, but Oh, Pantheon just said, nope, you're not killing me. Yep. At the end of the day. It's gonna be a 2-0 oh. for the Rift Sharks. Oh. Definitely that saw some a... good things out of Metabusters that second game, especially made it pretty competitive. Thomas, you gotta shout out Thomas there, man. He played out of his mind that game yeah. on the Auction, but wasn't able to wasn't able to do enough. And I think Auction or Thomas was definitely the the best performer on um, Metabusters. That would he. Yeah, he Dude, played super, amazing. super well. Who'd you say would be the um, MVP for Rift Sharks? Um, I'm feeling... Um, I'm feeling... Joel I'm leaning Lux. maybe the Lux or... Oh, the Ziggs? Yeah, that's not a bad shout-out either. The, the only reason I, I wouldn't say the Lux is because, yeah, we're 3-0 at the start, but I, I feel like it took such a long time to actually like convert that into... Yeah, that's fair. Blowing people up out of nowhere. 
Yeah, I will give a nod to Hadiri as well. I think he did really well on the Ivern, only had two deaths. A lot of those engages late game were attempted towards him, and he was able to survive survive them and then you know just kind of as the iron was just buffing up the team is what made that so so difficult for them but i don't really think there was like a single standout performer on rift sharks that second game i think they all played pretty well um so i think definitely i think ziggs would be a fine choice all right and then do we want to do an interview with anybody sure i'd be happy to uh, you just ping him real quick i'm gonna give him scrim bot sure Think of questions. Uh, Getting out of blow. Yo, hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. What's up, Mister 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 Dragon? Oh, I gotta mute the stream. Hold up. All right, there we go. What's up? Uh, how do you feel? How do you feel? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I haven't played Pantheon in like over a month, so I think I did pretty good for that. Yeah, we were a little surprised that the auction went top, but then it seemed to actually do pretty well. Um, yeah, no, he 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 did play really well. I was uh I was I was kind of struggling. I was really excited to play against the Scion, but yeah, had to adapt. Yeah. What we were, were your so thoughts right. on the series overall? I guess. I mean, I think at least for me, I thought it could have went either way, but I'm a little surprised that it was kind of a two zero in that fashion. Um. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely surprised that it went that fast. Um. Because I do know that they are like Metabusters is a very good team. Um. I don't know. I we just like we were we've been prepping. We've been talking about drafts for like the past week. <laughs> we I, I guess we were just more ready. I don't know. I'll say game one. I thought especially you guys came in with a really good draft plan. Seeing something like Callista was super exciting. Um, I was a little surprised that Eric got to play as Blitzcrank, but I mean he performed on that super well. Really a good yeah. game on everybody. Yeah, I mean game one. I feel like they kind of let a lot of our really good champs through. Um, cause like we had Callista blitz spot, which is a very like, like Dean and, uh, Eric are very comfortable on both of those champs. They are very good at them. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Was the, was the Pantheon like a, a prepped pick or was it more of a spur? I mean, moment? I mean, I figured Yone would be banned. Um, and we didn't want a blind pick. So like, cause like normally I would, I would have probably picked like Camille or something. Um, so that would get banned. And then, I mean, Pantheon is like my fourth best top laner, I would say. So we, we just always knew that we were going to kind of pick it. I mean, we were like thinking about just having me weak side, uh, and picking like Scion or Orn or something, but I don't know. The Pantheon was, it was always there, but it wasn't like our first pick. Yeah, you definitely First did choice. well, considering they were throwing multiple bands in your direction. What are your yeah. thoughts just kind of as you're heading towards the finals now? Um, I mean, Rift Sharks are going to win it all. Um, not, no bias there. Fair. But, uh, um, I don't know. I mean, finals are looking pretty good. Uh, they look very interesting. I'm very excited to play against Spectres because I don't think I have yet. Um. So, I mean, I'm excited for finals. I think the the teams that are going to finals are definitely the, uh, like they've been very good this season from what I've seen. Two two O's in the in the playoffs. So yeah, definitely, yeah. it's hard to say it's not the two best teams going into that final matchup. And I I believe both series with Spectres and Rift Sharks were two one. So it's been really competitive and close. So definitely should be a good finals. For sure, for sure. You got any other questions, Will? No, I'm good. Thank you okay. for coming for the interview. Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, congrats on the win. Go celebrate Thank with you. your Thank team. You. Oh, yeah. All right. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. All righty. Apologies for the scuffed uh, scuffed stream game, too. Um, can't really do much about Riot deciding to off the client. But... um.
We only get better from here. So, And thank you for being a co-caster. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Big shout out to Will for casting. I mean, honestly, solo cast in one series, cast in another back to back. That's a big ask. And so I know everybody, including me, appreciates you taking the time to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go do homework now. (laughs) All right. Uh, Thank you for everybody watching. And we'll see you whenever finals is. Looking forward to it.